Thanks for joining me for another Airbrush Asylum video. This will be a two-part tutorial tribute to someone that we lost last uh, month. So April 14th, unfortunately, this person passed away uh, suddenly from a stroke. He was a huge inspiration to myself and many, many of you watching and everyone else in the airbrushing and custom painting and custom car industry. And that person is Mike Lavalley. He's the innovator of True Fire. He was so much more than that, even though he contributed so much with bringing that to market. But as an artist, he was just phenomenal. Like he could paint anything. He was just incredible. And um, the reason I've painted this uh, tribute for him, the reason it is a Tassie Devil is because when he came out in 2015 for his Burn the World tour, we hosted him here in Australia and Melbourne. And um, while he was here, he, he wanted to thank us. So he painted a Tassie Devil on a bonnet or a hood for all of our friends overseas. And um, he gave that to us and I've still got it and I cherish it. And I'll, like, I'm just so blessed to have a piece of his original artwork. So this is my version um, as a tribute to him. And uh, let's hope that it does raise some funds for Michael Valley's family. So I believe there will be an auction at some stage this year. So keep an eye out on that. I will post updates as I get them. I believe Coast Airbrush are gonna host the auction. So I've got to work out um, all of that and then ship this particular half tank once it's fully cleared. It's not flow coated yet. So once that's done, I will get it sent off as soon as I have all of the details. And then, uh, yeah, you can possibly own this. So uh, by all means, keep an eye on that. As soon as I have details, I'll let you know. Let's get into the video now and uh, you can see how I created this particular artwork for a good friend of ours, Mike Lavalley. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm just uh, using a pencil and sketching out some of those uh, teeth just so that I can better see them on the reference image. The reference is printed on regular A4 copy paper and now I'm just going to cut out all of the uh, main values like the dark areas and the light areas and also some negative and positive templates as you can see here. So using the negative template I sprayed down some Euro Red by House of Colour just to get my basic outline and then I also used a bit of a positive uh, template to get some of the ears lined up in there and uh, to get a brighter base for the eye. So just using another one of my templates and uh, further adding some shape to the ears as well as the nose. And now back to some freehand rendering. So I'm just going to build this up gradually. I did make numerous paper templates. I didn't show you that whole process because I figure you've seen it quite a lot in my videos. And basically all you need to do is print whatever reference it is to scale and you, you cut out all the main areas. I generally focus on all of the shadows, um, the highlights, and obviously key areas like the eyes, the teeth, the nose, the ears. So just anything that you need as a foundation to really build up that artwork. Now I've switched to bright yellow. I've mapped in uh, my teeth. So just lightly dusted them and now I'm adding a bit more rendering to them. I'll further render as this uh, video tutorial continues. So you can see I'm up nice and close with my airbrush. I'm leaning on the surface, so therefore I've got a glove on that hand. This uh, protects the surface from any contaminants, keeps it nice and clean, so that there's no chance of any reactions as I apply candies and or clear coats later on in the project. So this half tank uh, is by DNA Custom Paints. It's uh, just a fake sporty tank completely hollow it's got a little mounting hole at the top so you can hang it up in your man cave or whatever a really cool to paint on and um, it was prepped using uh, trident black and then I clear coated it 
and sanded it to prepare it for airbrushing. So it's not looking like much yet, but I'm uh, just using that bright yellow. So again, the bright yellow is made up of white mixed with yellow, and it's all House of Colour paint. I've added reducer to my liking. So just um, mix it up the way you like it. And just uh, adding some texturing around the eye, hitting some of those highlights, and just all the key highlights to really start to bring this artwork to life. And also using a texture template, this is the Gerald Mendes Art Tool Texture FX2. So one of the templates out of that series. I will pop some links to products used in this video in the description below. So if you are interested, by all means, check them out. And if this is the first time watching one of my videos, then welcome for all of our regular viewers. Welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this video so far. If you are, feel free to give it the thumbs up, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon, and that'll notify you every time I put out new content. So when adding the texture, if I'm using the texture template, I tend to move that around as I spray through it. That gives you all different effects. And uh, to get any real sharp detail, you want to be up nice and close with your airbrush. So almost touching on the surface. And I'm moving that airbrush back and forth as I'm moving to create my stroke. So you don't want to keep it in one position for too long. Obviously it depends on what you're doing, but... Um, you want to just build up your shadows and your highlights gradually instead of trying to saturate the surface and keep that air pressed down at all times and I only like pull back slightly on the trigger finger to release a little bit of paint. So you'll notice that I unfortunately skipped a little bit of the step um, of the rendering process using this bright yellow. I did forget to hit record in that part so apologies for that. But uh, just to get you up to speed, what I've been working on is some dagger strokes, further detailing the ears, but really just to start to build a uh, texture within the fur. Also used um, some micro dot templates just underneath the eye, and I started to put in some of the whiskers as well of the Tassie Devil. So just building more and more of that uh, fur texture. So just dagger stroke after dagger stroke. And utilizing a texture template by Airshot Stencils. This is texture 5. I'm just starting to build in some texture towards the back of the Tassie Devil. And this will be the section which will engulf into the fire. Now switching to pink, uh, this is white mixed with red and this time I'm using Trident airbrush paint. And I'm just going to render in the tongue and some of the gum areas within the mouth. So just gradually adding the pink where it's necessary. There's also dusting it in on the ears.
Okay, so now I'm switching to Molly Orange. This is House of Color. And I'm just going to start to really add a bit of that orange into the Tassie Devil as I want this uh, Tassie Devil to look like he's um, coming out of the fire and burning away. So you can see I'm hitting the edges, spraying over some of my textured areas. Being careful not to totally opaque over everything, but I can build more and more layers as I go on. As you can see, House of Colour, this, well, this particular colour has really good coverage. Adding some in the eye to get that glow. So he looks like a fiery Tassie Devil. Now using the microdot template, this is by School of Realism. I'm just uh, getting some of that, those fine dots in there. More dagger strokes to build in the fur. So you can see it's starting to get a bit more fur texture and uh, it's becoming a bit thicker the fur so that's what I'm going for it's just building that layer upon layer And starting to get some defined edges within the mouth area. At this stage I'm using my uh, fire tool templates. So this is just one of the uh, stencils out of my set. And that's just giving me nice sharp edges where I need it. So as with most of my artworks it's a mixture of utilizing freehand templates with freehand airbrushing as well as the paper templates to really uh, get the foundation of the artwork into place without having to sketch on the surface. So now coming in with Euro Red, I'm going to start to lay down the base for the flames. Again, utilizing my fire tool templates, just hitting some of those edges to get those sharp defined sections as well as adding a freehand. So you want to mix it up. You don't want to just use the template. You want to use both freehand and uh, the use of the template. And I kind of then just visualize the flow of the fire coming off that Tassie Devil. If you're unsure, get yourself a practice piece of paper or something, a black bit of paper or card, and try it out first on that before you do it on your artwork. A couple of embers in there as well bit of a flame lick coming off the ears so I'm really just trying to get that flow and work within the shape of what I'm painting so now to further detail I'm going to use the molly orange this will be the second layer
So by adding this layer, then I'm going to add my candy on top and I'll gradually build more and more layers to create a more realistic appearance at the end. It's still not designed to look like photorealistic fire. It's more intended to just look like an interpretation of fire. Okay, so now really to make this layer pop, we're going to add some tangerine candy by House of Colour. And I'm spraying over that whole layer of Molly Orange. You can see how much that pops straight away by just hitting those areas. By all means, if you don't have or don't want to use automotive candies, uh, then by all means you can use a water-based equivalent. If you follow these steps, it'll still give you a very similar result. You can see I'm also spraying that tangerine candy over the Tassie Devil, so over the body of the Tassie Devil. I want to start to really build those colours into it so that it looks like it's emerging from the fire and it is a fiery Tassie Devil. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that tangerine candy. Now I'm going to tack rag it, just to remove all that dry overspray. You can see the difference that it makes. And now I'm going to seal that candy layer with some SG100 Intercoat Clear by House of Colour. So this will just prevent any bleed through once I get to the clear coating process. So now coming back in with a bright yellow. I'm going to work straight over the top of that uh, intercoat clear, so there's no problem with doing that. So apologies for the reflection, but the intercoat clear does dry quite sort of like a semi-gloss. But at least I hope that you can still see what's going on clearly enough. So you can see I'm further texturing, working over that candy now and then I'm going to bring more candies into it and further detail it as the uh, video goes on. But this layer upon layer approach is essential to really make your artwork pop. Instead of just doing one or two colours, um, I try to add lots of texture in, utilising the candies on top, and then uh, because it's a candy, obviously you can still see through what you've done. It's not eliminating all of your texture because it's a completely transparent uh, tone and then you can work back over the top of it. So you can get a real sense of depth by using candies.
So up nice and close and some real fine dagger strokes with that uh, bright yellow around the mouth area. Starting to build some highlights in as well and further texturing the gums. And then I'll lay t uh, candy colours over that. Same with the tongue. So building more layers within the fur, so some some varied uh, dagger strokes as well, so some real fine ones as well as some broader ones, and some uh, sort of light highlight shading on top of certain areas. So that'll flatten off those sections of the fur and uh, make it look a bit thicker in those areas, and then you've got the more strandy areas which will make it look a bit raspier and thinner. So you want to get that sort of difference in layers and you want to get that more organic feel, not so defined and perfect. You know, the, the fur should go in all different sort of directions, not be too uniformed. And by adding some of those highlighted areas, that's going to allow for my candy to sit on top as well and sit brighter. So now coming back in with the fire templates, I'm going to add another layer of fire. So just 
further adding some highlights to the previous layer of uh, molly orange and tangerine that we did earlier. And then this one will get a pagan gold candy over the top of it. That's when the fire will really start to come to life. So just picking out those highlights, hitting the edge of the template and then wisping off those. Essentially using that template as well to sort of sketch them in. It does take a bit of practice to get that flow. So don't give up. So that's where we're going to leave it for part one. Be sure to check out part two and take a look at some of the other videos that I've got listed here. And as always, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.